Chapter 22, Step 10. Continued to take personal inventory and when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. Steps 1 through 9 assisted us in halting our addictions and restoring balance back into our relationships. Our investment in our recovery through willingness, honesty, humility, and clearing up the wreckage of our past has brought us to a new realization who we are today. We have built our lives surrounding the principles of the 12 steps of recovery. Steps 10, 11, and 12 are known as the maintenance steps, ones we perform every day. Why do we need to proceed with this continued review of our lives? After all, we have taken painstaking effort to change the direction of our lives by sifting through our past experiences. Our efforts would be futile if we quit here. Relapse is a certain danger for any of us in recovery. In our experience, those who become complacent in practicing the principles of recovery have placed themselves at risk of relapse into their addictions or into another type of addiction. Often, relapse patterns have been defined as returning to behavior patterns that were prominent during the person's addiction. Some people used aggressive behavior to push people away. Others may have used a demanding relationship to avoid dealing with their own needs. And others may have gotten into isolating behaviors. Character defects can slip back into place like an old glove, feeling natural because they were part of our life for a long time. The tenth step keeps our actions in check so that we can be aware of the warning signs of these dangerous relapse patterns occurring in our lives. The person not acknowledging accountability for their actions is allowing negative energy to grow in them. They slip back into their denial through their actions, which without intervention will lead to relapse. When I was five years sober, I was working at an agency as a counselor, where I began slipping into old negative, intimidating behavior with my staff. I had been getting negative and was confronted by my entire staff. I thought at that point in time that I would respond with compliance and agree with them, although I was angry about their confrontation. They suggested that I go into some outside counseling to review my actions. One of the staff brought up that there was a positive reinforcement workshop going on this weekend and suggested I go, so I agreed. I went to the workshop, but because I was still in denial and full of resentment towards those who confronted me, my interactions at the workshop were abrupt and negative. I was kicked out of the positive reinforcement workshop because of my attitude at that time. I thought about my actions over the weekend. I realized that I was pointing the finger at everybody else before I remembered that when pointing a finger at someone else, there are three fingers pointing back at me. I gained humility from that experience, insight into my disease of addiction, realizing that they are greater than me as an individual. Yes, we started down the road to recovery and it's easy to stray off course. Our personality that led us into addiction is still with us, even though our disease is in remission. Like a garden, if I don't pull the weeds, it can spread, killing off what I was trying to grow. Without the tenth step, our unbridled character defects grow in us. Our half-truths, controlling behavior, resentments, and unresolved conflict build walls around us blocking us of a clear perspective. Even in long-term recovery, this can turn into a deteriorating lifestyle ending in relapse and self-destructive behavior. Let us remember that the rigid thinking of our character defects kept us locked in a life that stopped us from being teachable. Step 10 allows us to review our everyday interactions and how we are applying the principles that we have learned in recovery. Our ability to maintain unconditional relationships with others is sustained in our constant evaluation of our interactions in the present day. Step 10's moral inventory can be as simple as making a journal or mental note of what I've done right and wrong in context to my values, and promptly admitting it when I was wrong. We keep appraised of our victim, controller, and isolating character defects in this manner on a day-in and day-out basis. This side of the inventory is a spontaneous amend is a checkpoint to maintain balance in the expectations we have for others and expectations we have for ourselves. I have found that this keeps me aware of my actions in general in my personal and social relationships. The benefit of making an immediate amends after I recognize the mistake 
is what brings my personal values to the surface, being my expectations for my behavior and its impact on others. This also brings out the inventorying of what my boundaries are in my relationships to the expectations I have on how others should treat me. The total purpose is keeping a balance in my relationships with others and helping me maintain awareness of my actions. I have often used the 10th step in couples counseling as a tool to lead them to a conscious state of awareness. The idea that we're all going to make mistakes along the road of life is something that we all can understand. I have had people in domestic violence treatment who have said, I am aware of my spouse's needs and her input is valuable to me today. But how do I know if I'm starting to shift back into my old character defects of entitlement? Like we said before, these behaviors were ingrained into our lives over a long period of time. To be concerned that they could resurface in our lives keeps us alert and teachable. The tenth step is a tool to keep us on track of balanced relationships. The term I use is unconditional relationships. We are no longer victim, controller, or isolator patterns, where we imprison ourselves or hold others hostage. To keep us out of the chains of our character defects, we must follow step 10 on a daily basis. This process gives us a clear indication about the balance of expectations we have for our own behavior and our expectations how we perceive others should act toward us. To keep us out of the chains of our character defects, we must follow step 10 on a daily basis. This process gives us a clear indication about the balance of expectations we have for our own behavior and our expectations and how we perceive others should act towards us. When I am holding on to resentments, step 10 is a place to air those feelings in our relationships. By inventorying my emotional reaction to someone's behavior, I can share my feelings with clarity to the one I am feeling affected by. For example, in thoughtfully sharing my anger about someone's actions toward me, I might find a mutual agreement in the expectations of acceptable behavior in that relationship. This allows an opportunity for exchange on both sides of the interaction. I am not going to control the outcome of any interaction with others, but I will have input into the relationship. This is part of the personal inventory having clear insight into both sides of the interaction. It eliminates confusion and the need for assumptions. So far, we have broken the step down into 1. Reviewing our actions in relationships with others and discussing our amends with others. And 2. Reviewing our expectations of others' actions toward us and our interactions with others. This review assists in continuing to create safe and fluid interdependent relationships. We are always changing in our relationships and in our environment. Keeping spontaneous gives us the ability to be successful and to gain the full potential of relationships. I have found that taking an inventory of my attitude at the start of the day has been essential in improving the quality of my day. I take time out and assess my daily goals, viewing over the prospective highlights of the day in a positive fashion. This effort is helpful in having a different outlook as things come to pass during the day. I may start the day out in a negative light thinking about things that I fear most as possible outcomes. It is important to attempt to alter this view of my interactions with the world. Starting the day of having a positive view creates new ideas, new perceptions, and a new understanding of how my day will go, which will be reviewed through my relationships with others. For example, I may think or wish that health, abundance, and prosperity will build in my life today and I may give thanks for those things. Now, I can set goals that I would like to accomplish. In starting the day out with negative thoughts, I am not able to see something good happening even if it is right in front of my face. We have all had negative thinking patterns that have consumed us at some point in our lives. We can't change from being negative thinkers to positive thinkers overnight. I do believe, however, that overnight we can be open to the possibility of positive things coming into our lives. Negative thinking is part of my character defects, and in some cases I am saying that I am in control because I can't see any good coming out of something. This attitude is a self-fulfilling prophecy. It will continue to draw further negative outcomes because the more energy I give it, the more it resurfaces in my life. 
I am not saying that a person can change every aspect of being a negative thinker, but I am saying that it doesn't have to be a prison. I can open the day up to positive things happening in my life. Scheduling time to work on this step is important. It is good to set aside two periods of evaluation. One, first thing in the morning before getting out of bed, as we mentioned earlier, it helps in review of our attitude and direction. Two, at the end of the day when we're getting prepared for bed, perhaps just before brushing our teeth, or when we lay down is a good time to reflect what we did right and what we did wrong today. It is not just being accountable for our actions and how we affected others. It is also how we were affected by others. This is a time to look at what we did right also, giving us an attaboy pat on the back and affirm that we are on a spiritual path in recovery. If we become aware that we need to make amends to someone, we can make a mental note of it and when we see the person next time. A 10-step worksheet at www.treatmentguide4u.com that is www.treatmentguide4u.com is available to assist the reader in getting familiar with these guidelines. Using the inventory of our relationships that we presented in steps 4, 6, and 8 is a way of reviewing our relationships with others. And again, those areas are 1. Relationships with family 2. Relationships with friends and acquaintances 3. Relationship and our physical needs 4. Relationships based on sexuality 5. Relationships based on society 6. Relationships based in public 7. Relationships based on spirituality Details of these relationships are found in chapter on Step 4. This process of accountability and making amends assists us in maintaining a balance of unconditional relationships with others. Once I was irritated with a clerk at a store when they were attempting to sell me something more than what I wanted, I ridiculed the clerk in front of his co-workers and left. Once I got home, I realized I was attempting to embarrass him in front of his colleagues. I called the store and talked to the person. By making amends for that behavior, I became aware that I had been condescending to them and acknowledging their individuality and equality to me. These actions bring forth my personal values where I am more conscious of my actions towards others in similar situations. As we proceed with this process, we will get further indication of the need for making amends by our conscience or feedback from others of our wrongdoings. That small voice inside, which is the voice of our true self, becomes awakened. We are acknowledging that we have slipped off the path of recovery and need to get back on track. With awareness comes accountability for our actions. The response to a sincere amends is usually met with respect from the other party. But again, we are not in control of the outcome, and motives should not be set, other than to proceed for personal resolution. We proceed courageously in continuing to build relationships with others. I realized my self-centered values were the architect of my controlling relationships with others. We use step 10 to correct our errors in our judgment. The program has taught me a set of spiritual principles which has brought me to a position of humility in my actions. We now move on to step 11.